Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 107 of our WWE 2022 save in TW 2020. This is Raw for March week one. Uh, as we said on the previous episode, the state of it is WrestleMania month here uh, on the WWE save. And uh, we begin the official March to WrestleMania uh, for um, SmackDown because Raw has already been on, the, on there basically uh, for the past month or so since the Rumble. Um, but now we are only several weeks away here from the two-night extravaganza that is WrestleMania. But as usual, a lot to get to as we really start to uh, ramp things up a little bit uh, heading into WrestleMania because we got a lot to sort of fit into these um, these shows um, before we get there. So we start with the pre-show here. Robert Roode, Bob Roode, uh, is back on the pre-show as he gets a win over Akira Tozawa, 657. And this one, 59 overall for this one. Um, This has kind of been Dijak's spot for a while now, but we decided to give a little Bob Root here uh, a victory on uh, the pre-show. So not a lot to add other than that. So now we jump into the main edition of Raw. And again, it's been a little while since I feel like we've had a Raw, because if you think about it, had the go-home edition of SmackDown, then we had No Way Out, then we had the State Of. So it's been a little while since Raw, um, the last episode. So hopefully you remember what happened? If not, I will uh, pick back up on it and let you know, uh, since, again, it has been a little bit uh, there. But we start things off with Steve Austin, who is in the parking lot, because that's where everything happens on Raw, just like in reality, I guess, in NXT. But uh, so Steve Austin is out there sort of, you know, kind of looking around and doing his usual stuff um, to get ready for the show. And here comes Daniel Bryan. And Bryan is not a very happy man, and of course we know why. That is because Christian attacked him to end Raw uh, last week uh, after the main event where Brian successfully defended the WWE Championship against Montez Ford. Um, And so Christian made the attack on Daniel Bryan, uh, and so Brian comes in, and he's very clear here (laughs) to Austin, I want a match with Christian. And Austin said, don't worry, Daniel, already a step ahead of you. It's already signed. You and Christian tonight in the main event here on Raw. So Christian, as we said, attacked Brian uh, with the title belt last week uh, after, you know, kind of the Brian was doing the post-match interview after the match against Ford, and uh, Christian just came out of nowhere, attacked him. And so that was that. So as Brian uh, has gotten what he wants, he starts to walk off, and here come the Street Profits, Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins. Um, Again, this gets an 83 for this one. So Austin is just kind of looking at Ford, and he looks at Dawkins, and he says, you know, Dawkins, I know you've got a match coming up, so why don't you go ahead and just get ready for the match? That's what, you know, Austin kind of says to Dawkins because he's going to team up with Jeff Hardy and Ricochet to take on the Bullet Club, AJ Styles, Finn Balor, and Adam Cole. Um, But, so that kind of leaves Austin Ford alone here. And Austin just says, you know, Montez, I like everybody else, I I saw it last week. The second time, you know, you come up short, I know you're not real happy with me because of what happened the first time. He said, I was just doing my job. But, He says, I'm just going to tell you something right now. You can be pissed off at me. You can do whatever you want. But I can tell you right now, I've seen it. The two times against Edge, against Daniel Bryan, you're going to be a WWE champion one day. And he said, I think you should use that anger that you have right now for not being able to win that title. I think you should use that. And it's just kind of Austin pushing that theme that Montez Ford should use that anger that has been built up inside of him to come up short twice now for the WWE Championship. Um, and so that's kind of what we leave it at here with Austin really pushing that Montez Ford should use that anger uh, that is in him uh, after losing those two matches. So there you go. That's your starting point here for what's going to be a very um, packed episode, like I said, of Raw. 83 overall for this segment. So Dawkins heading to the ring for his match. Ford's going to join him uh, here shortly, but um, that is your setup. We have our main events. We have a big match coming up to start the show, a six-man tag. A lot happening here on Raw. All right, but then we get uh, kind of a a look backstage, and as we've kind of seen multiple times here um, over the past several weeks, we really just kind of get the camera zoomed in on a a locker room door, and as we always know, it's usually the Bullet Club who are down off by themselves, and that's what we have here. So we don't see Adam Cole, uh, AJ Styles, Finn Balor, Uh, but we do hear them, and that's kind of been a theme where we've heard them, you know, in the locker room. We've heard them talking to seemingly someone else at some point, but all we hear right now is just the voice of AJ Styles, so we're assuming that all of them are in there because of what he says, and that is when AJ Styles says, 
I'm tired of listening to Steve Austin run his mouth. I'm tired of him making all these decisions to try to hurt the Bullet Club. He allows Edge to get into this championship match, my championship match at WrestleMania. Of course, we remember Edge beat Styles last week, uh, thanks in large part to Randy Orton, um, who hit the RKO on Cole and Balor, um, and we kind of had the interference there with that. So that allowed Edge to earn that spot now in what's going to be a triple threat match that will headline WrestleMania night one. Um, So Styles is pissed off at Austin, um, and maybe kind of like Montez Ford. But um, he just says that, so what they're going to do is they're going to remind everybody what they are. And Styles says that the Bullet Club tonight, all of them are going to send a message to Steve Austin and everybody else who has tried to wrong them. They're going to send a message tonight. So that is um, kind of AJ Styles um, issuing a warning here that the Bullet Club is going to basically remind everyone what they are and send a message here tonight. All of them are going to do just that. So 79 for this one. That is going to lead us into our first match. And as we said, a good match here, 77. So it is the Bullet Club, AJ Styles, Adam Cole, and Finn Balor getting a win over Angelo Dawkins and Enigma. So Jeff Hardy and Ricochet. So kind of the setup here is we put Dawkins in action. We didn't put Ford in action because, you know, coming off that hard fault WWE Championship match, kind of leave Ford out of the picture uh, in terms of just the actual wrestling. So that was kind of what we were going for here. But it is Styles pinning Ricochet with a phenomenal forearm. But something we need to point out here is really throughout this match, a lot of the focus is on the Bullet Club really working over Angelo Dawkins. And eventually, they all team up kind of in a a three-on-one move here and take Dawkins out of the match. So Dawkins uh, down and out, so he's hurt. Um, So it kind of leaves the three-on-two, and Jeff Hardy and Ricochet just cannot overcome the numbers there for the Bullet Club. So... We see, you know, some of that sort of kick up and aggression of uh, the Bullet Club here. Um, As we just heard AJ Styles saying they were going to send a message. So they kind of sent a message to Dawkins here um, after, you know, kind of what it was, again, a pretty hard fall match. But 77 overall here for this one. So the Bullet Club uh, starting the night off with a victory. All right. Then we get kind of a backstage here. And it is Christian who is calling someone and eventually... We hear him say, oh, Edge, you answered my call, because that has been something, as we've talked about, uh, you know, previous weeks, Christian was talking about how Edge wasn't returning his calls, but then last week, we saw, after Orton was responsible for helping Edge beat Styles to earn the spot uh, in the WWE Championship match at WrestleMania, Christian came up and said he was the one that was down there to try to help Edge earn that spot, but it was Orton, you know, who basically won-upped Christian, that's kind of what we've been playing here, um, you know, storyline-wise, So Christian calls Edge, and he just says, Edge, you know, once again, I want to remind you that I was out there last week to help you. I was out there to help you against AJ Styles and the Bullet Club. But, you know, once again, Randy just tried to one-up me, and we know how it works here. But he said, you know, no, I'm not going to get into that. I know you don't want to talk about any of that. You've said it very clearly. You just want to focus on, you know, the WWE Championship. But he says, "I, I told you I would make it up to you, and that's when I attacked Daniel Bryan at the end of the show last week. Um, and C says, so I'm going to finish it once and for all. I don't care what Randy Orton does. I'm going to take care of Daniel Bryan for you. And I'm going to do it here tonight. I'm going to finish the job is what Christian is saying. So just kind of Christian, you know, getting a little happy that Edge is taking his phone calls again, but, uh, kind of explaining as we all knew what the real reason was why Christian attacked Bryan at the end of the show was to try to one up Randy Orton, who, <laughs> had one up Tim by, uh, you know, interfering and allowing Edge to beat Styles. So that is kind of your your back and forth between Christian and Orton continues uh, with Edge kind of in the middle of everything as usual. So 69, nice segment here for this one. All right, and then a brutal, brutal match. Uh, 40 overall for this one. Now, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into because this was kind of the, I don't know, kind of a, a triple whammy here in terms of bad match rating. So for starters, Tony Storm was injured. I knew that going in, but I needed to have her in this match. Um, so I think it was the bruise, some kind of bruise or something. It wasn't, it's not a significant injury, significant injury but um, so I knew that was going to slow her down. knew that would knock the rating a little bit. Also knew that Gigi Dolan's in the 20s in terms of popularity. So that's not going to help either. Um, and I'm pretty sure I also set this, no, okay, I said it as regular. So I thought I did storytelling too. I'm like, well, that would have really hurt it as well. But so Storm gets the win here. Pretty quick match against Gigi Dolan. We're playing off of the fact that last time around in the six-woman tag, 
It was Storm teaming with Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan to take on Gigi Dolan, JC Jane, and Zia Lee. Um, they, you know, Dolan had taken out Storm in that match, and so we we ultimately come back around to it here in a one-on-one setting for Storm to get the win. Uh, but the bigger story, as we said, Storm kind of, you know, dealing with an injury right now. Um, but after the match is where things start to pick up a little bit because after the match, you know, Morgan and Riot are both ringside with Tony Storm here because, you know, these two have been tag team partners. We all know what's happened since Riot's return. We've started to see the teamwork between these two really playing that up, uh, even, you know, not in a tag team match yet, but we've really seen the teamwork played up between these two with Storm, again, being taken out last week by Dolan. So a lot of those things we've really been pushing. So here come our women's tag team champions, who, as we know, successful title defense at No Way Out against Kyrie Zane and Lita. Now... We know, based on how the championships work, they alternate back to Raw. And so, Baszler and DeVille make their way out as these three are standing in the ring. And that is when they said, you know, once again, what do you know? Here we are with the championships on Raw. We were successful against Kyrie Zayn and Lita. And just as we said, we're still the champions. And there's no one that can beat us. And that's when DeVille says... And if there's anyone that knows that no one can beat us, it should be you, Tony Storm and Liv Morgan, because we've given you multiple opportunities to beat us, and you've proven that you can't, because you're not the kind of team that could come out and offer us any challenge whatsoever. But, DeVille says, there may be a team that could offer us a challenge. And she just kind of is smiling, and then Baszler starts smiling at her, um, and she says... So I do think that perhaps our next opponents should be you two. And of course, there's three people standing in the ring. And so they're all kind of looking around going, what, what, what are you doing? What are you talking about? And then that is when DeVille says, it should be you, Liv Morgan, and your tag team partner, Ruby Riot, because we haven't beaten you two yet. And so that's kind of your setup here is trying to cause a little bit of dissension, um, which we've kind of, I don't know, played up fully, but it's DeVille kind of really poking at the fact that, you know, Tony Storm really never asked for Ruby Riot to make her return and then start to realign with Liv Morgan and all this. But DeVille is suggesting we've already beaten Liv Morgan and Tony Storm, the Rebels, but perhaps we could get a challenge from Liv Morgan and another one of her tag team partners in Ruby Riot. So we kind of leave it at that for now. Uh, but DeVille really poking at the bear here um, in terms of really trying to play up perhaps that, um, you know, is the team of Tony Storm and Liv Morgan no more? Or could they officially accept the challenge with Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan? We'll find out. But that is uh, Sonya really playing that up here in this one. So 59 overall for this segment. All right. Then we get to a big match, which is set up based off of last week. Um, it was Garza kind of stepping in. After, you know, Mustafa Ali has been going at Dominic and Ray and those kind of things. Uh, but Garza stepped up and so led to this match. And actually a pretty good match here between these two. 71 overall. Shouldn't surprise us, really. I think we did do still the show. No, we do regular. Okay. I, I had my, my match aims all messed up here. I must have switched them multiple times. Um, I do know we have a still the show match coming up later. But um, I thought this one may have been too. But, but get about eight minutes here for this one. Garza gets the win. So, you know, able to get a little bit of revenge here for Garza. So, We've seen him now step in, as we said, with Dominic and and Ray uh, against Ali, who's kind of turned up some of his aggression a little bit in recent weeks um, against the Mysterio family. So Garza able to sort of avenge what Ali has tried to do to Dominic and Ray. So he gets a 71 overall for this one. And so after the match, we know it's been built up, you know, for a couple months now. It's just, is Ray ever going to fully accept Angel Garza? His intentions, because, you know, Garza has said time and time again, look, he's just here to kind of, you know, be around and and be around the Mysterio family to embrace the Lucha Libre tradition. Um, You know, he's kind of looking at Dominic as someone he feels like he can help too. Um, And so just kind of all of that. So we talked about kind of the tradition and he and Dominic kind of being maybe the future and being able to learn from Ray. That's really what Garza has been pushing. So finally, you know, Dominic just kind of looks at Ray after the match. Gars is standing there with his hand raised. And then Ray just kind of looks at Dominic and then goes over and grabs Garza's hand and raises it in the air um, to, you know, kind of signal the victory here. So also perhaps signaling that Ray has finally accepted uh, that Angel Garza 
we'll pretty much do whatever it takes here um, to be involved with the Mysterio family, and uh, we'll have more on that to come uh, next week on Raw. So 73 for this one. All right, then we get a segment here with Keith Lee saying that last week he told everybody he was going to call out Kevin Owens, and he does that here um, and calls out Kevin Owens, and Owens is not waiting very long. So this gets an 83 overall for this one. Always promo segments with Kevin Owens do well, as we know. Um, But Lee just says, you know, come on. You you hit me with a stunner. Uh, I'm here for a fight anytime. I'm, I'm, you know, one of the longest reigning Intercontinental Champions uh, that you know we've we've seen in WWE in a while. So I, I think I know what you want, but I just want you to to make it very clear, you know, why you decided to hit me with a stunner out of nowhere, which happened after the match where Lee retained the IC title against Cesaro. Um, and so, you know, Owens just says, you know, Keith, I've got I've got nothing against you, but he says you're holding something, you're holding something that I want. And he says, you know, I, I want I want to make sure everyone remembers that for the longest time, every single week here on Raw, who was the person that came out every single week without fail and, you know, defended his championship. I defended that United States championship every single week that I physically could, and I did not stop until finally it was taken away from me. And he said... I've been feeling a little bare without a championship around my shoulder. He says, I've been the United States championship. I've defended that title, as I said, every single week that I could. But now, you know, I need to be a champion. That's kind of, that's who I am. Like, I have to have something to chase after. I need a goal. And he said, that was my goal as United States champion, was to beat every single person that came in my path. Well, now there's someone else in my path to get what I want. And he said, that person is you, Keith Lee. You have what I want right there around your shoulder. And yes, it is as simple as that. I want your Intercontinental Championship. And when I beat you for the Intercontinental Championship, I'm going to come out and I'm going to do the same thing. Every single time that I can, I'm going to defend the championship. And that's kind of what Kevin Owens is saying here is that he wants that feeling back of being able to to be, you know, call the champion and to go out and wrestle every single week. That's what he wants. And so Owens officially lays down the challenge for Keith Lee for the Intercontinental Championship. And Keith Lee just says, that's exactly what I thought. And he says, you got it. And so that is your setup here. So Keith Lee, Kevin Owens, um, the challenge has been accepted When will this match take place? We will find out soon enough. 83 for this one. So we get into another match here, and it is the in-ring return of Ronda Rousey, who we hyped up last week as having her kind of, you know, in-ring match here for the first time since she returned at the Royal Rumble. Um, You know, obviously getting prepared for this big match against Becky Lynch. And so Rousey gets the win over Tegan Knox, 519, the armbar. I think we did do storytelling, yeah. So this match was going to suffer terms of rating anyways, but it goes down because of the lack of psychology. So, um, 519, pretty much a squash match here. I'm pretty sure we probably got the yeah bonus for well-executed squash. I figured that. So, um, it's worth noting that Becky Lynch is ringside here, um, kind of scouting Ronda Rousey. So, she's come down um, to sort of scout Ronda and all this other stuff. Um, and so, that's kind of what we're playing up here. And so, as if we were going to leave it at that, right? Um, so, after the match, you know, Becky has come down to watch Rousey and Rousey then just kind of supplies or excuse me, applies this submission uh, to Tegan Knox. So to continue kind of inflicting pain on Knox here. Um, And then Rousey is doing it while grabbing a microphone. And what does that do? Well, (laughs) she starts taunting Becky Lynch as she has Tegan Knox in the submission. So you can hear Tegan Knox screaming, as this submission is going on. Um, so we're really just playing up Ronda as just this cold-hearted, um, you know, person who just continues this. So a 91, a great segment here, as always, between these two. But just continues to taunt Becky and, you know, just keeps saying, see, Becky, this is this is you. Like, this is what you do. I remember seeing you like this, where you were down in pain. She said, oh, yeah, that was the Mae Young Classic when you got attacked. I remember that. Everyone else remembered. So she's just, like, she's going on and on and continuing to taunt Becky Lynch. Um, and so finally that, you know, Rhonda's getting personal here talking about Becky and just, you know, how she's not the same. We've been pushing that, uh, that Becky's just not the same person 
since the Mae Young Classic with what happened with her uh, at the end of that show, which we all remember. Um, and so um, that is kind of what Ronda's pushing here. And so eventually that brings Becky out. And <laughs> look, Becky's just, once again, she starts going towards the ring, but we've got a host of officials having to, for pretty much what the second time in the past several weeks, break these two up. So once again, preventing these two from really going at each other um, is kind of what we have here to, to leave this off. But Ronda just continuing to sort of, you know, go at Becky Lynch and uh, really trying to make things personal here between these two, uh, because we know that was what Ronda's kind of initial thing was, is that she felt it kind of as a personal attack on her uh, with, you know, what Becky had been talking about and everything and, you know, recalling back to the WrestleMania stuff and all that. So Ronda continues to up the ante here in terms of just taunting Becky and officials have to break them up yet again for this one. So 91 overall for this great segment between Rousey and Becky. All right, then in a 69 segment, nice rating here, we get an announcement and it says that the Lucha Bros, who you know also are men's tag team champions here, um, who are making their way back to Raw, so kind of uh, both titles, switching back to Raw here for the time being, um, we get officially announced that the Lucha Bros will find out their WrestleMania opponent next week on Raw because there will be a mini tag team tournament. There will be four teams involved in a mini tag team tournament. Next week, uh, two two matches, you know, to start the show. Then we will have uh, the two winners of those matches facing off to determine the opponent for the Lucha Bros at WrestleMania. So 69 overall for this segment. Of course, the Lucha Bros coming off that big win in the four-way tag team match at No Way Out, which, of course, involved uh, Damian Priest turning on Drew McIntyre. So that is your setup for what should be three really good matches I'm hoping for next week in terms of this mini tag team tournament. We'll introduce the participants in that uh, on next week's show. All right, then uh, here is one participant I can tell you for, for certain that will be in the mini tag team tournament. It will be American Alpha. Uh, Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. It will not be Drew Gulak and Rick Boogs. I apologize to the Gulak Boogs fans or Boogs Gulak. I, I don't know. We, we got to come up with something for this uh, team, which I'm pretty sure is the first time we've ever used them as a team. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not not ideal there. But um, so they get the win. You know, again, pretty much kind of a squash match here with American Alpha getting the victory 52 overall for this one. Um, as I said, they will be involved in that mini tag team tournament next week. So that is, uh, you know, the most notable part of this. But the other notable part comes after the match because after the match, what happens? 69, nice rating for this one. Here comes the Bullet Club. And they go after Chad Gable and Jason Jordan after the match. So They've taken them out. Adam Cole and Finn Balor take out Gable and Jordan. Um, so they're down and out. And that leaves what? That leaves Kurt Angle all by his lonesome with Gable and Jordan taken out. We now have these three kind of like, you know, piranhas here. Styles, Cole, and Balor. Cole and Balor take a step back. Styles steps up to Kurt Angle. And AJ Styles takes his hand and just shoves it right in Kurt Angle's face and just shoves him. Um, and so Angle is getting fired up here. Kurt Angle is ready to fight, but it doesn't happen because here comes Daniel Bryan. So Bryan coming out to make the save here. Um, you know, again, we all know kind of what's going on here, but Daniel Bryan's got this match tonight. He doesn't care. He's coming out to make the save. And then Bryan gets down there. So he's starting to, you know, try to haul off here on Styles. Again, knowing what we have coming up at WrestleMania. But then, you know, the numbers are still in the advantage of the Bullet Club. Here comes Montez Ford as they start to make their way, or he starts to make his way out. So these two come out pretty quickly in terms of, uh, you know, consecutively running out. And so that sends the Bullet Club retreating for now. Um, so they never are able to get their hands on Angle, um, except for AJ Styles shoving him in the face. Uh, but, you know, no real, you know, fighting contact there. But Brian and Ford able to come out pretty quickly here to make the save. And so that sort of leaves it with the bullet club retreating Jordan and Gable kind of regret, re kind of gather themselves once again. And then we have Brian and Ford kind of looking at each other and, you know, Brian just sort of patting forward on the back. Again, these two coming off a hard fought WWE championship match, but they make the save here for American alpha and Kurt angle. So yeah, bullet club <laughs> once again. Um, yeah, they said they were going to go after people and well, They've taken out Gable and Jordan, who, um, yeah, are, are still regrouping here uh, after this attack from the Bullet Club. 65 for this one. 
All right, then we get a video package looking at Bailey's title history in WWE. So we go back to kind of the NXT days, uh, look at her recent WWE championship run, and we get kind of some comments from Bailey in here talking about how she's in the Money in the Bank um, you know, ladder match, and everybody can criticize her for not taking the rematch with Ripley. But she says, why work harder when you can work smarter? And that's exactly what she's going to do because she's going to go beat all these other women in the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania, and she's going to go get back what is rightfully hers, and that is the Raw Women's Championship. So Bailey, kind of, you know, trying to call her shot here uh, in terms of what, you know, she has in store uh, for everyone else in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, which as we know as of right now involves Bailey, Charlotte Flair from SmackDown, and Dakota Kai from SmackDown as well. So 67 for this segment. All right, then we go to the ring where Rhea Ripley has just watched this Bailey uh, video package, and you can tell she's sort of amused by this um, because, you know, she did take her championship from her. So Pat McAfee asked Ripley, you know, we're starting to get ready. She's like, it's, it's WrestleMania month now, and Pat's just kind of pushing that here and just says, you know, Rhea, we go all the way back to the Mae Young Classic. You made your return, um, you know, your first match back, you beat Shayna Baszler, but it was your second match back that a lot of people remember and that was the one against Sasha Banks, where you beat Sasha, um, you know, and we all remember kind of the history between you and Bailey and Sasha before you were injured. And she said, you know, what do you remember about that match at the Mae Young Classic, and what are you going to try to basically take away from that match to beat Sasha yet again? And so Ripley starts to go into, you know, what she kind of recalls from that match, how she was able to beat Sasha, you know, what it was like just, you know, that night, that was kind of the, you know, got the first round win. Round two, she goes in, beats Sasha. Um, you know, just what kind of a whirlwind it was that night for her to win the Mae Young Classic. But beating Sasha was kind of that starting point on night two. And so, you know, she starts going into all that. Well, you know, crowd starts to buzz because it's a 68 here. And before you know it, from behind, here comes Sasha Banks. And she's got a chair with her in hand. And before Ripley can kind of respond fast enough, it is Sasha hitting Rhea Ripley from behind with the chair right to the back. And, of course, that sends Rhea down. Um, And, you know, Sasha's just got this chair, which we've seen kind of notorious now for what this chair is. Uh, We saw her use it at the Royal Rumble. That helped her win the Rumble. Um, And we kind of visually see it. It's still this chair that has this huge dent in it. Like, we have seen this multiple times now. Um, you know, was it just a one-time thing at Wrestle? Excuse me, at um, at the Royal Rumble, or you know, what's going on now? What is what is this dented chair? What does it mean? And so there's this huge chair that still has this dent in it, and R- Sasha's just going after Rhea Ripley. So more dents in the chair now, just with the attacks. So we're getting multiple chair chair shots here on Rhea Ripley from behind. And so after you know Ripley's down, we see officials coming down to help her out. Um, Sasha just goes over to the corner. She's smiling, and she puts the chair right back in the corner of the ring that, if you remember, where she picked it up from um, at the Royal Rumble. If we remember doing the end of the Royal Rumble, Bailey and Naomi going at it. Sasha went over, grabbed the chair from the corner of the ring, had the huge dent in it. So she goes back, places this chair um, right back in the corner of the ring where it was at the Royal Rumble. We still don't know what all of this is. What does this mean? What is this kind of symbolizing here? Sasha in this dented chair. We're not sure, but we do know that she has left the Raw Women's Champion out cold here um, after multiple chair shots. And so officials checking on Rhea Ripley as Sasha gets the upper hand here on the champ on the road to WrestleMania 74 for this one. All right, and then, yeah, here we go, 80 for this match. So I did say I remember a match still to show. We did go still to show with these four because, come on, if you can't go still to show, with Cesaro, Sheamus, Morrison, and Benjamin, who can you go still to show with? Um, so two, or excuse me, four really good in-ring, in-ring workers here. Even though Benjamin, I know, is considered the weak link. Uh, come on, we, we still knew we'd get the most out of these guys uh, in this tag team match. So a really good tag team championship, or excuse me, <laughs> tag team match, period. Not a tag team championship match. Um, as Cesaro and Sheamus get the win over Morrison and Benjamin. So it's kind of playing up the fact that, you know, we said last week, after Cesaro had come up short, um, or excuse me, a couple weeks ago, um, that, you know, he was going to kind of regroup. Sheamus came out to help him after he lost the match against Keith Lee. So they both came up short against Keith Lee in their IC title, you know, quest. And so we said they were going to regroup. So they regroup here in tag team action, getting the win over Morrison and Benjamin in a great match, 80 overall for this one. 
All right, then we get a video package ahead of our main event that looks at uh, the reaction. So we get some exclusive footage from Big E after the Brock Lesnar beatdown of Kofi Kingston where Lesnar beat Kofi at No Way Out. Uh, remember, we saw Big E coming out, throwing security guards left and right to try to get to Lesnar. He eventually got to the ring, but he didn't get to Lesnar, um, who you know left through the crowd after just destroying Kofi yet again. Um, so... You know, we get kind of a reaction from Big E, a backstage interview here, and Big E's just going off, talking about Brock Lesnar. He says, you know, Brock, you've, you've pushed me too far this time. He said, we're going to finish this, and I'm going to be waiting on you every single, everywhere. He said, I'm going to be waiting on you, and we're going to finish this. I don't care when it is. I don't care if it's now. I don't care if it's at WrestleMania. You and I are going to finish this, and it's just going to be me and you. Um, so Big E just kind of fired up here. In terms of, you know, Brock has continued to kind of go after Kofi Kingston and Biggie just saying he's he's crossed the line for the final time, basically, and that he doesn't care when, where, how, he's going to get his hands on Brock Lesnar uh, and they're going to finish this. So that's kind of Biggie's message here uh, that we get from that exclusive interview after No Way Out. So 84 overall for this segment. That is going to lead us into our main event. As we set up earlier, Daniel Bryan going one-on-one with Christian and uh, let's see how it plays out. And in our main event, that does an 81. So back-to-back 80-plus matches here at the end of the show. Usually not the case all the time on Raw, but we get it here as, uh, yes, it is uh, kind of how you probably expected it to be. Brian able to get some revenge as Daniel Bryan gets the win over Christian. 12.09, um, gets a submission. Christian ultimately has no choice but to tap out here with cattle mutilation. Um, Brian, 85 in-ring performance. Christian, 67. So this gets an 81 overall. Um, so Christian said he was going to come out and, you know, try to take care of Daniel Bryan. Ultimately comes up short here as our champion um, is able to successfully, um, you know, get some revenge of some sort, I guess you could say, on Christian. However, after the match, Christian made the call, you know, didn't know if Edge was going to, you know, be here. Maybe assumed Edge wasn't going to be here. Well, after the match, Brian, you know, standing over Christian, and that is when Edge comes in from the corner, and we see Edge, and he hits the spear on Daniel Bryan after the match. A lot of a lot of after match um, kind of chaos on this edition of Raw, but again, um, like we said, we're having to put a lot of stuff in in motion here before WrestleMania, and so uh, as you'll see on SmackDown too, we we are really kind of hitting the the, the speed button in terms of really turning up. Uh, kind of the speed on pushing things forward uh, in terms of these stories. But so Edge hitting the spear on Daniel Bryan after the match. And so on a night where the Bullet Club has attacked everyone in sight, seemingly, um, you know, or, or basically really made their presence felt, it's Edge returning to hit Daniel Bryan with the spear. We know the history there. Um, and so after he does that, he goes over to Christian and Edge helps up Christian. We know he's kind of been reluctant to kind of be around Christian recently after, you know, being upset that he lost the WWE title at, at, at the Royal Rumble. And so Edge finally maybe coming back around um, to, to Christian here. So Edge hits the spear on Bryan, helps Christian up, and then Edge holding the WWE Championship over Daniel Bryan. This gets a 91, and that is how we finish up the show is – with Edge holding up that WWE Championship, Christian right beside him, Daniel Bryan is down from the spear, the Bullet Club come out on the ramp, and that is when we see sort of, you know, AJ Styles and Adam Cole um, just sort of stand, or excuse me, and Finn Balor uh, stand on the ramp here as they stare down at Edge, Christian, and Daniel Bryan, who is kind of, you know, just laying there after getting the spear. Um, so Edge holding up the championship, staring at AJ Styles as the Bullet Club stands uh, at the top of the ramp there um, to end the show. So that is how we finish up this edition of Raw with a 90 segment. Good stuff on this one. Uh, but, you know, again, the theme of the show was seemingly Bullet Club early on, you know, kind of taking out Angelo Dawkins. Then they come out and attack, you know, American Alpha and go try to go after Kurt Angle. Um, and now they finish the show um, kind of standing on the ramp here, watching as Edge holds the WWE Championship and Styles, you know, Cole and Balor sort of plotting among themselves as they look at Edge uh, holding the title over Daniel Bryan. So, 90 for this segment. That's how we finish up this edition of Raw, which gets an 84. No popularity changes there, so a good show. Um, as we talked about, I know there's a lot of kind of 
post-match angles, but we had to kind of put a lot of those in place on this edition of Raw just to, to be able to get everything we needed. But as we said, one that was highlighted by the Bullet Club sending a message um, and, you know, ultimately finishing the night uh, standing tall on the ramp um, as Edge you know, holding up the WWE Championship, which he will now be involved in in the triple threat match, Styles, Edge, and, and Brian for the title at WrestleMania. So there is that edition of Raw. Let's see what we get to before we wrap up. All right, so that was Raw, uh, an awesome show. Fantastic reviews here for this one. And um, Conan, is he staying with uh, AAA, uh, Triple I don't, I don't know, I guess not. Um, Anna J gone from AW, so um, contract expired. Well, that's interesting. Should we sign Anna J? Um, have we already signed Anna J? Perhaps the truth will be known at some point. Um, all right, let's look at this. So Anna J's gone from AW. Uh, Penta. Um, we're relocating to the Southwest. Oh, we got some opinions. You know, I always love the opinions. Those are my favorite. Michael Hayes thinks Tony Storm is going to be a star. Well, maybe I assume Michael Hayes is impressed because she worked through the injury. But um, so, all right, there's uh, a positive uh, mark for Tony Storm here from the one and only Freebird himself. Uh, Finn Balor's got an opinion. Uh-oh. Uh, Angel Garza is going to be a star. All right. Well, look at that. Look at that. I mean, they both had singles matches. Tony Storm had a singles match. Angel Garza had a singles match. So we're pushing the right people in terms of um, you know, when it comes to Michael Hayes and Finn Balor, I guess. So, uh, all right, drug test fees, the usual raw gets a 4.02. Um, so that is where we stand on that. So as we said, uh, appreciate you guys, uh, as always for watching uh, a big edition of raw, a lot more here on the road to WrestleMania, but as always be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out every other, everything else we've got on the channel. Um, as the AEW series did return. So if you missed that, we kind of did our sort of recap episode of the AEW series. I've already got a couple episodes um, ready to go and recorded, so um, those will be out soon enough here. We kind of spread these out a little bit, so I know you guys sometimes just, like, like I said, I know sometimes we can go several days between you know WWE episodes and, and so forth, but I kind of just try to spread them out a little bit so we can stay on track and keep the videos consistent because um, that hasn't always been a strong suit <laughs> here on the channel, and I, I always apologize that for that. But um, So check out the AEW series. It's back. And uh, all the other stuff, WCW 1998, I'm going to try to do the same thing with WCW as I've done with AEW um, and really just playing catch up on all my storylines and everything. Um, and also the Exploring the Z-verse series as well, 20 plus episodes into that one. So a lot more great stuff to come on the channel. So again, hit that subscribe button. And on the next episode of our WWE 2022 save, it will be SmackDown for March week one.